Hello, hello there, and welcome back to Wolfen, and welcome aboard the HMS Belfast, the one and only. And to be honest, it's time to give the British some well-deserved love, and to actually give this ship a little bit of a praise, because it is better than you first might think, at least in the current state. But you know, Gaijin is shuffling around with the damage models and the effectiveness of shells, etc. Yada, yada, yada. But honestly, the HMS Belfast... Um, in a nutshell, um, is somewhere between the Zelensnyakov and the IGN Mikuma when it comes to gun effectiveness and also when it comes to armor protection. It is not coming even close to the Helena, but which Cruiser actually does. And in its gun performance, I think it somewhat can keep up effectively with the um, Prinz Eugen. Um, but it certainly is way, way better than the RN Polar. So just to give this a little bit of a perspective. Now, first of all, what is the ship? Well, it is a premium British 5.7 rank 4 cruiser. And obviously, therefore, I want to discuss it in the light of the upcoming 10 years Gaijin anniversary sales at the end of October and if this is a good option and to be honest it brings in the results it does the job it doesn't have the glamour or style factor of some other cruisers but it is just doing the job and to be honest it does it good enough um, it's not overpowered it's not weak but you have to play it right and more about this in just a moment so let's start with the armor we have a main belt of 114 millimeters of rolled cemented armor with the bulkheads being 63 millimeters so at the front the aft and midships yeah because this is the weird thing where there is the machinery the main armor belt goes up quite significantly and if you want to increase the effectiveness of the main belt you obviously want to angle and most of the time you are going somewhat at an angle to a certain a destination on the map in the first place but the problem is there is a huge shell catcher in the middle of the ship because there is the citadel raised and that is a little bit of a weak spot the deck plating with 50.8 millimeters is good enough to hold back a lot of he spam and where there are the four main turrets going into the citadel uh, there the deck plating is going up to three inches or 76 millimeters that's not bad now just like with the weird armor step in the middle of the ship the barbettes are also split to the side where you would expect the most fire to come from it's 50.8 millimeter or two inches from the front and the rear of the barbettes it's only an inch or 25 millimeters the surrounding of the turret armor is overall 51 millimeters and the front it has 102 millimeters so that is then obviously where the armor makes the most sense and that's it with the armor. It's an all or nothing armor scheme. It's solid, but not magic. And um, certainly when something like a Helena wants to kill you, then you receive a lot of damage, even from HE spam because of how the crew is dispersed in the ship. So don't get shot in the first place. And this is where it comes to a little um, trick that I have practiced for quite a while. If you spawn, before you spawn, you wait 20 seconds after the game actually has started. That is very important. You wait up until your team spawns and then you count down from 20 to 0 and then you spawn. That has multiple advantages. First of all, you do not get stuck in a traffic jam and can maneuver freely. Second of all, you are not the first one to be targeted because you're the rest of your team mostly consisting of bots in the first place are in front of you and even if somebody sees you being a player and wants to prioritize you because apparently you're a free kill then you have the enemy has some difficulties to lock onto you because all the ships of your team are in front of you where you then can freely dpm away and that brings us then to the main armament. First of all, you do not have torpedoes like the Prince Eugen or like the Mikuma, but that doesn't really matter but because I do not very often get into the first place where I need them um, or where they would save me, right? 
and then we have the before mentioned six no <laughs> the 12 six inch guns or 12 152 millimeters in four triple turret two forward and two aft in super firing turrets and also your secondaries you have four twin four inch guns four uh, guns on each side and you also have some six twin 40 millimeter placements they have a different name uh, so they are not called Bofors, but they behave like Bofors. And uh, let's then talk about the ammunition, because this is where the ship uh, really, at first glance, has a massive disadvantage compared to both the Helena and the Zelensnyakov. First of all, you do not have proper AP at all. Um, so you have effectively three types of AG and one type of SAP, but that's good enough. And it comes down to two usable shells. So the stock AG shell is um, equipped with four kilograms of TNT burst charge, 37 millimeters of penetration, and a muzzle velocity of 841 meters per second. And this shell comes in three different flavors. First with a normal nose fuse, then with a time fuse, which is absolutely pointless, and with a proximity fuse. Now this is getting interesting because that shell obviously can be also used effectively versus aircraft. And you have the same loadout for your shells for the secondaries with the HE shell coming in three flavors as with the 152 millimeter and a sap round. And so I would choose equally that you use two thirds for each gun caliber of the SAP shell variety and then one third you complement it with the HE with the proximity fuse. And so when an aircraft comes, you switch to the proximity fuse HE, and uh, most of the time you use the SAP in the first place. And uh, to be honest, the SAP at first glance looks not great because it has, quote, only 1.7 kilograms of TNT bursting charge but it does a surprising amount of damage for what it is. And so you can work over those Moffets real quick, you can work over those Helenas real quick, and if you toggle between the ammunition types, SAP versus a broadside or to knock out the turrets and HE to just splatter the enemy crew on the deck and just also do damage in the non-protected parts of the hull, you can be surprisingly effective. Again, um, if you look at the SAP uh, TNT only, the Zelensnyakov has roughly 6 kilograms, right? So that's amazing. And you have roughly a third or a quarter of that. And that is not really um, dramatically good, but it does the job good enough to not really complain about it. And again, you have to see it, you have to see the ship as a grinding machine. And it does the job. It just gets you to places and you just work over the enemy cruisers. And um, I figured out, and that is just a testimony to how broken HE is, that you can kill battleships even with this HE. I've done it so far once versus a German one, but you know, it's battleship being battleship. And I think that is just um, what the ship also was designed to be. It, it wasn't designed to be a representative ship uh, to bring home all the glory that was the hood's job um, probably but it's it's doing the job it does what is asked of it and that is all that i can ask of it and uh, to be honest yes it would be cool to have uh, two or three torpedoes per side just in case but you do not really need it in most places yes it would be cool to have a high pen ap round but do you really need it if you have the sap and you are below 10 kilometers most of the time in the first place? Not really. Um, do you have an, uh, do you have to have an amazing um, shell with lots and lots of TNT? Yeah, it would be great, but you have enough DPM. And so this is when we come to the last factor, and that is the reload of the main guns. It's 7.5 seconds and it never drops below this because you do not really have a ready rack in that aspect. And so this is then where you have more DPM than at Zelensnyakov which has 
8.0 seconds in best case. Yes, it's not as amazing as the outright brutal DPM of the Helena with 15 guns with 6 seconds reload, but you know, in the realms of what's actually more than decent, this is absolutely fine. And you know, the Mikuma does not have SAP and you only can rely on the AP. Uh, so you, you can see that this trio of light cruisers is actually closer together than to be expected when you think about the Zelensnekov, the Mikuma and the Belfast. So the Belfast, not that bad, um, but don't think that you can carry versus three battleships and five cruisers and ten destroyers like, you know, a little bit of exaggerating you can do in the Helena. And I think that's it for me today. So the Belfast not a bad ship it's decent it's nice and for the british tech tree of course the one and only option that's it for me today thanks for watching thanks for listening please give this video a like with it subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of war thunder